Yes, thank you so much. Please gather your friends, gather your your relatives around your television set. This is not a miracle session, this is a teaching session. Want to know what the word of the will of God say about issues. Together then, then we pray together and we can go on. Father, we thank you because you are faithful. We thank you because you will answer our questions. We thank you because you will feed us. We thank you because you do everything under your power to make sure that you have good marriages. Lord, please help us. Show us mercy. Grant us grace. Help us to take your word as the final authority in any situation and help us to go forward with this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I'm talking about courtship. I think I will have concluded it now, but it looks like there are many questions that are coming out of courtship. I want to answer the question before I conclude. Let's take note that courtship is a very vital part of the relationship that leads to marriage. After people have agreed to marry, they have prayed, they have sought the counsel of God, they have agreed, they have, they have come together and they have, they have, they have, they have, they have teamed them up. There's a courtship starts. The courtship will be at least six months, maximally one year, one year, six months. Beyond that, there will be a reason that is causing it. And some courtship can be very lengthy and very long and, 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 and very long, but that should not discourage you if you are in that kind of setting. There's some courtship that lasted for five years. The parents or somebody is, is infusing. But please, if the parents are infusing, stick to your partner. They will agree one after a time. But please do a thorough courtship. But the sample has the right to stop your to, to, to extend your courtship for you. If for example as God is doing courtship that one man gets so annoyed that he can almost slap the partner, then I must extend your courtship until that one matter gets resolved. Courtship is a very important period in the, the marital life of a of, 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 a, of a couple to marry. Please. It, it must not end in marriage. It's very important for us to know this. And those of us who are handling courtship, you must not, you must, you must be authoritative enough to know how to handle it. It's not just uh, to bring two people together and be, 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 be between them. That's not all. You must be authoritative enough to say no. Yes. I sent your courtship for two weeks. In fact, I have, when I was an active young man, I sent so much courtship. On the night of the wedding, I said, look, throw away that card. What was the problem? You must say, I must wear white. You must say, I'm not wearing white. I'm not wearing even anything. I'm just going to come in like that. You must say, how can you come in like that? Say, I must wear white today. You must say, I know wear white. You must wear anything you like. You must was insisting. You must was insisting, man. There was no go ahead way. So as I disciple, I came in and said, okay, let's discuss this matter of what to wear. I said, the, 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 the white wedding dress that you want to wear, what's the origin? Where did it come from? Is it biblical? They have no answer. I said, now nah, you go and do research. Find out where that white wedding dress comes from. Find out the origin. Find out what... What what's the source? Then you come and tell me. Then we'll discuss it together. And we'll find a way. Hmm. That was a tough time. But some guys don't want to do research. But that's that that calls for research. But then they found out how the white wedding dress came about. Say so now do you want to do a white wedding? Or do you want to do a mad Christian wedding? So, this is not as easy as we think. It's a point of discipleship. If you do it thoroughly, 
the couple is properly discipled. Many of us didn't go to a courtship. That's our problem. I pray that you will understand. So let me take some questions now. When I come the next time, we're going to conclude this matter of of the of the of the of the of, the, of, the, of marital relationship between a man and a woman. Take note of what we have said. They are very relevant. Very relevant. This question is number one: dating. Dating. What about dating? Dating is not Christian courtship. Dating is of the world. Dating is not even Nigerian. Dating is what you normally do overseas. You see a girl, you love her, or you are interested in her, you take her out, you plan some relationships to find out whether she is compatible with you. And in this process, you may even have sex with her. These are what women be do nowadays. I think it's a matter to God. If I want to say it in a, in a way that is not looking very kind, I think it's among unbelievers. And it should not be said to be the, the truth among believers. At this same date in the Bible, if you see a lady you want to marry, you don't try to find out whether she can marry you. Some people talk about all kinds of things, uh, temperament, uh, this and that, whether they can fit into the wife's life, whether they can fit into the husband's life. I want to say to you, friend, dating is not part of marriage. Take it as I've said it. Let us, let us find the correct way to marry a girl. It's what we have been explaining to you. Dating is not, dating, dating actually will derail us. Amen? So dating, I don't cancel dating at all. Even if it's a godly dating, I don't know how it can be godly. I don't know how it can be godly. Two people who are not, who don't know themselves, to any extent, going out together, going to eat together, going to do this together, that is, that's against Christian courtship. After eating the boss money, how can you say no? So please, dating is perfect. This question is very important. Many young people want to do dating. You see, we have lost opportunities in the church. Many people cannot be ministers again. That's what is costing us. We have lost opportunities in the church. And we better correct it now. Dating is not to be not to part of our, our, our courtship program. Not dating. Dating. No, not dating. Courtship. Let me not say more than that. If you have more questions than that, please bring them up. I want to answer your questions. Marrying someone I don't know. That's the argument for dating. I don't know this lady. Let me know her before I marry her. That's the period of courtship. Courtship is not dating. If you didn't know her before you married her, and, and, and to a large extent, it's a very small number of people that you're going to marry that you never knew them. But just so they be your dream or somewhere, and went to find out who they are, very small number. People normally marry people in their congregation, people they know somehow. So there's no question of marrying someone I don't know. You don't know her at all, and God is showing her to you. Maybe in your dream, maybe, maybe, maybe anyhow, then go and propose to her and wait for her answer. If it's God, let us see how God will work it out. And if she agrees, you don't need to marry her immediately. There's a period of courtship, six months minimum. I've said it. And this courtship, God has arranged in such a way that it can last for four years. All kinds of friends will come up. You want to marry a girl from another tribe, your parents will say no. Even Christian parents say, I can only marry a Yoruba girl, say a Yoruba man. Cannot go, you cannot go more than this circle. And the girl is found in an Aosa man. Say, no, you cannot marry an Aosa man. And different tribes have the regulatory names for all these tribes. 
But they don't know once a man is in Christ, a new creation. There's no Yoruba, there's no Igbo, there's no outside, there's no thief, there's no, nothing. They are just one tribe. So please, please, please. There's, there's no way you can talk about someone you don't know. But some people are married people, they didn't love at the first sight. One guy told me that he didn't like this man. But when he came and proposed to her, he knew that he cannot escape. That is the man he will marry. No matter how he tried to push him away, the man said no. He said they are married. So it doesn't, matter, doesn't, matter, doesn't mean that you must love a man at first sight. No. No. A man can come to you and propose to you because God told him. And if it's God that told him, you, there's no way you can escape it. So you better settle down to reality. If you are both Christian, both of you have become, gone into the Lord for a long time, the chance of your marrying well is there. If you are young Christians, you still have some 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 troubles. But if you are elderly Christians, you are going to, to face it. That only God will tell you who to marry. And if God brings a cripple to you, I tried it in my family once. Told the guests in the family out. I said, look, you are excited about marriage. I said, but if God brings to you a, a cripple, I got to say, Uncle, please, you joke a lot. I don't want you to joke. This is not a joking matter. This is a serious matter. I will not marry a creep even if God brings a creep. That's how far your concentration goes. Somebody has married a blind woman because God said she marry her. One of the great singers in the Hebrews. So the person's physical condition does not matter. There is man who has no hand and no feet. This is happily married. Because God said, this is the place to marry. So please, don't insist on your choice. You, do not, you, do not, you don't know, marriage is not for one day. Not for show, not for sensation. It may last for so long. If you want to marry a blind man, there's a reason why I want to marry a blind man. There's a reason for it. God wants to marry a girl who is dumb. There's a reason why you may have to minister to her throughout her life. Those are ministers in England in those days who married a woman. He didn't have any outside engagement because the wife was sick. So he had to stay with her. Go to church, minister the church, come back and stay with her, his wife. That's, 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 the, that's the breath of the ministry. And he had a successful ministry. It's not what we wish that matters, but what God wishes for us. So make up your mind now. Let not be selective. That you marry the trust of God for your life. And when you marry the trust of God for your life, you enter into your rest. What, what makes people happy? What makes people proud? What makes people rejoicing? It's not what makes, it's not what, what should make you rejoice. It's what God, what makes God happy that should make you happy. Are you hearing me? Please take note of what I've said. What should make you happy in life is what God, what, what God has ordained for you. What makes God happy? People are looking for ministers uh, to want to have a fantastic ministry. They are looking for a woman who is a minister so that both of you can minister together. You have no child yet. Don't know how she will do. Don't know whether God appointed her to be a minister at all on the pulpit. Don't know whether God appointed to be a minister at all. But that's not the first thing. It's life, marriage before ministry. If you're going to be a minister, you must associate in marrying a, a husband, raising children for him. If you want to do it, you must have got to a stage where you can say, yes, I'm now qualified. Then you can go into ministry. I stress these issues. I stress these points. In the ministry, Anywhere I find myself, because I know that this is the truth. Don't wreck people's lives. Some people enter into ministry too early. They had no children. They enter into ministry too early. And now they are suffering it. They are calling the woman, the young overseer's wife, the young overseer. 
but she has no, she has not raised her children yet. Her children are still small. So what do you expect her to do when she gets overseas? When she gets overseas, you have to her look after the church and look after the child, the children. That's a conflict. God is all wise. Let us follow God quietly. I don't even want to talk about the point that God said women should not preach in the church. But that's an instruction. That's an instruction. Go to look at circumstances, wonder would that wonder would that instruction came. The woman who has not raised any children. Who does not obey her husband properly. Can she preach in the church? Want to be a pretty, a pretty woman? Go to the children, go to the children's session, go to the adolescent session. Accept the ministry there. That's why the Bible says the woman should not talk in the church. She should ask her husband at home. That's for women who are disobedient. Because it's not, it's not Adam who disobeyed the woman. So please, let's follow the Bible. Hmm? Marry someone I don't know. You cannot marry somebody you don't know. There's a period of courtship. It makes it incumbent for you to know him. You may have been like him before. But God saying this depends to marry. Then marry him. Because you don't know what's going to happen in the next five years, ten years, three years, twenty years. You don't know what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen in the next thirty years. There's a special task that God has ordained for two of you to fill within the next 15 years. And you are refused to marry him because you don't know him now. So that's, that's, that's being arrogant. If God is saying, you marry this person. And you have prayed. And some things will make you pray more. And you have prayed again. And God said, this is the person I want to marry. And you are hearing God because you are an elderly Christian. You have been the Lord for some time. You are hearing God. You have had him in circumstances beyond marriage. And you have tested him. And this is the time for marriage. God said, This person I want to marry. Even if you don't know how to talk to her, even if you don't know how to, to approach her, even if you don't know anything about her, pick up courage. Go and tell her with your disciple. And let us see what God will do with that. But the, the period of courtship is such a period. That you will know her very well. Please, let's not go back. Let's not go back on this. Eh? So I don't know how you can marry somebody you don't know at all. It's not possible. You will know her. You know her during courtship. That's why I said courtship is, is a Christian engagement that is very, very crucial. Some people don't believe in courtship. They say, see her, marry her. Marry her after, after one week. Doesn't matter. Once you see her, you like her, and she likes you, and you, marry, you go and marry her. No, there must be a period of courtship. You know, for me, have a good courtship. I, even if you didn't have a good courtship, but you, you now know that courtship is very, very important. Please try to have a good courtship. Even if you are married, you didn't marry your finances, you didn't marry your friends, you didn't marry. There's nothing you marry. So how can you marry? How can you become one when you didn't marry your you didn't marry this, you didn't marry this, you didn't marry your finances, you didn't marry your 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 your, your, your family, you didn't marry this, you didn't marry this. That's that's what they do in caution. So please, please, let's not take things lightly now. I'm begging you, don't take this lightly now. Be marry your ministries. Be marry anything. And you're, you're not in marriage. So how do you go on? What ministry does the woman what, what is the woman involved in? What ministry are you involved in? How can you marry these, these, these ministries? So that when you marry, you know exactly what you're doing. What issue will you have? How will you train them? These are issues you should, you should, you should, you should properly trust in question. And if anything is becoming difficult, go back to your disciple. This is why he's your disciple. 
You can even postpone your marriage. Let me tell you. Be obedient. And you see, obedience are in the good of the land. Amen. Now, some people set some standards. E.g., she or he must be a graduate. He must come from this tribe. He was so tall, so much tall, so much short. <coughs> if you said, if, if you set those those standards, if you set those standards, then you're not you're not you're not a child of God, or you're not obedient to God. Because you cannot be conformed to this world. These are worldly standards. No one believe as you marry. You must be this height. You must be this figure. She must be this color, she must be this graduate, and I know that today there's no marriage. Because you might be your choice, and your choice is not God's choice. At some time, they didn't even consider anything godly. Do not be conformed to this world, be transformed by the green of your mind, that you may know what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's, is it not? This. So please, my friend, let's not tempt the Lord. See, God is watching us. We want to know those who will perfectly obey Him. If you obey the Lord, you will eat the good of the Lamb. There is no doubt about that. There are some circumstances in marriage that I, 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 I know God is directly in charge. What is the delay? What is the delay in bringing children? I normally thank God. Because that couple is going to bring up and Abraham. You will see. That God will simply bring up somebody that will change this world if they are faithful, if they continue to trust God. So there's no way everything happen automatically for you like that. Hallelujah. Some people have seen different tests in marriage, different tests. Please, my friends. Let us trust the Lord. Let us obey Him. Let us put our faith in Him. That's when a Christian should be trusted. Some people married today, after three years, the man said, no, 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 we have to go and find out. Find out what? Find out what? For what? You don't trust God again. So please, 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 you must not be somebody you know. You must not say standards. You must be from this tribe, you must be from this tribe, you must be well educated, you must have a PhD. No, no, that's not for you to set. Marry the person that God wants to marry. Start from that side. You see, automatically God will not allow you to marry somebody who is lower than you so much. But start from the principle of, Lord, I don't care who you bring to me. I don't care who you bring to me. Once you are the one that is bringing this thing to me, I'll marry her. Start from that side. Don't give God standards. And don't put standards for yourself. Because if you put standards for yourself, you are going to look for your standard. You are going to look for the standard. You are not going to look for the will of God. I think I want to... I want to, to stop it here. But in case you have further... further, further you to clarify. Please, don't hesitate. Come to the house. Come, let, come and ask me directly. Come, let us argue together. Let us reason together. Let us find out the will of God together. If in this area, I find difficult to find out the will of God. Come, come. Some people want to be sure that she can be pregnant before marrying her. Some of these things you say here cause me to laugh. How can you be sure that the girl will be pregnant? The brother married, married a girl for several years, she was not pregnant. She went and married a second girl. The moment she married this girl, second girl, the first girl became pregnant. Will she now sell the second girl because the girl is not now pregnant? What is the reason for marriage? If you don't follow the Bible consistently, we are going to make a mistake. This for marriage is for ministry. 
First and foremost, we said it before, before, before. The first thing for marriage is for ministry. I make a, I make a help a shovel for you. Children are bringing a, a part of marriage, and God ordained that children should come out of marriage. Companionship is part of marriage. Sexual relationship is part of marriage. But to enjoy all this, to enjoy all this, you must fulfill the ministry to which you are called. Then on the, on the New Testament. So may God, may God help us. May God help us. I wish. Uh, you want a woman to be pregnant before you marry her? How will you make her? How will, how, how will you see you pray if you don't have sex with her? Having sex with her, is it part of the marital, marital relationship? Will God permit to have sex with her before you marry her? And if she's, even if she's pregnant, how are you sure that the child will live after she's born? You are tempting God. Yeah? Let us follow the Bible. Finally, social media marriage. I will speak on this later. I will speak on this later because there is a way I will speak on it now. I think that social media, social media is anathema. Actually, it is anathema. But there is a, a way which is going to give you a good marriage. But let me leave that for now. Let, let me say it now that for now, don't mind the social media. If you want to marry, wait for God. But does mean that nobody can marry from social media and succeed. Doesn't mean that. But for now, I want to say that don't marry on social media. The field is too wide. And you may make a mistake. On the social media, I think it's one over I don't know how many millions that can succeed. Marry any girl you beat on social media. So may God help you. May God give us a good marriage. May God give us... Because marriage is, is the, the gateway into the ministry. If you fail in marriage, I don't see how you can be a minister. That's why it is very, very important for us to succeed in our marriages before we talk about ministry. May God help all of us in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for what you are saying to us. We bless you and praise you because you are God and you are good and you will not mislead us. Help us to follow you. Help us to seek your face. Help us not to be in a hurry at the point of marriage. For those who don't know you, help them to know you very well. This is for those who know you. They are the only ones who are prepared to wait. May this lead many people to know you. At the end, may they succeed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Threshers Media Center, number one, Refuge Close, on Gwambarde, Sabon Tashia Kaduna. Telephone numbers 0814-408-9412, 0805-845-5719. Email address threshersteam at yahoo.com or you could visit our website at www.threshersteam.org.ng